Hey boo, hey, welcome to Firm Foundation. My name is Kay and today we are starting on chapter one of the book of James. So I'm so excited. I really love James a lot. James is such a practical book. So let's give a brief little overview of what we're reading here. So the author of James is James, obviously, and this is James, the brother, the half brother of Jesus. James, a little fun fact about him is that he actually did not believe in Jesus. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah when Jesus was living. Jesus actually came and saw um, when he was resurrected, he actually saw uh, James and that's what made James actually believe in who he was. So James then became the leader of the Jerusalem church. And like I said, he was a unbeliever prior to Jesus's resurrection. So the main theme of James is wisdom, moral, ethical conduct. Um, it's really a call for Christians to practice what they preach. And just like Proverbs, James is considered to be the most practical book of the New Testament. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your truth and the ability to know you intimately. God, we ask that whatever it is that you want us to receive and know from this reading today, that we receive it. God, we thank you for your wisdom and your word says that if we ask for wisdom, you will give it to us. And so we ask not just for head knowledge and practical knowledge, but we ask for your support and your guidance and your wisdom and the application of your truth. God, we just praise you for today. We praise you for everything that you already have in store for us. We know that our riches are in heaven and we are just waiting in expectation for those things. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's get started. James chapter one, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. One thing that I think is so profound about the way that James introduces himself is that he doesn't name drop. He doesn't come in here and be like, you know, I'm Jesus' half brother, what's up? Like, no, he doesn't do that. He comes in and he, he humbles himself. He says that he's a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is him fully admitting and acknowledging the fact that I'm a believer. I believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And I just love seeing that. So another thing I want to know about chapter one, and especially this portion right here, is that chapter one is pretty much a summary of all the main ideas that are going to be taught and talked about throughout James. So James, a lot of people say that James is very similar to Proverbs in the sense of it's a lot of, you know, wisdoms where Proverbs was, you know, one line or sentences that were really powerful. James takes a different approach to his, his concepts. And instead, what he will do is he will go through and instead of just giving us a one line sentence, he'll give us a complete thought, a complete proverb in a paragraph format. So we get a little bit more context around what James is trying to teach us. So again, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. And this is just the dispersion is just where the Jews were scattered. The Jews were scattered at this time. Greetings. Verse two, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and the steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So count it all joy when I love looking for these key words because when it's basically saying it's not if, right? It's not if we're going to experience a trial. Um, and, and if you look at some of the other versions of the text, it says temptation or trouble. So it's not when, or it's not if we're going to receive these things or experience these things, it's when at some point we are all going to experience some kind of trial, some type of temptation, some type of trouble. But we need to know that in the midst of all that, our suffering can be good, right? In our suffering, God is made glorious, right? God's glory can be seen and made in our suffering. And so here, James is just simply trying to tell us that, listen, your suffering is going to make you stronger, right? Us suffering in the moment, it makes us more, it gives us more endurance for the future when we experience other challenging things, which we all are going to experience. And so he's just simply telling us to count it all joy. And I know that's like, even when I think about it, I'm like, yo, this is really hard to hear, like count it all joy when I'm in the middle of my suffering, my struggling. But it is true that you go through these things in life and then soon in the future, you go through something else and it's like, oh, I can make it through this because I made it through that previous experience. God showed me that I have the endurance, that I have the faith that he's going to bring me through this situation, just like he brought me through the last one. Verse four, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. Like I prayed in our prayer earlier, ask and receive wisdom. God wants to give it to us. Verse six, but let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. 
For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And one thing that I noted about this is that when you have doubt or when you are lacking in faith, that is why your prayers are not answered. Now, I want to be clear and say, we're not going to always get the answer that we want to hear when we pray. But sometimes when you hear absolutely nothing, it could be because we are approaching our prayers with lack. We're approaching it with doubt. So in one mind, we're saying, oh yeah, I believe God. I believe that he is who he says he is, that he's going to complete his promises, all these things. But on the other side, we're kind of worrying and wondering and anxious about, is it actually going to happen? Is it going to come to pass? And this right here, is it makes us double-minded. It means that we are being double-minded and we are basically thinking about God versus the world, right? God versus our wants. And when we do that, our prayers don't get answered. Okay, verse nine, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltion and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flowers falls, and its beauty perishes, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Ah, uh, this, this part right here, I know it gets a lot of people because sometimes we think, wow, rich people really are just not going to get anything, right? But the truth is that it's not that God is saying that being rich is bad. It's that a lot of times when you have material things, the more that you have, the more you start to put your faith in your things, right? Your stuff and less faith in God. And so basically throughout all of the Bible, God and all the people that are all the prophets and all the people that are speaking on these different things, all they're trying to say is, listen, it's just a lot more challenging when you have more resources. It's a lot more challenging to trust and rely on God because you start to trust in yourself. You start to trust in man. You become this double-minded person where your focus is on the world and what you're getting from the world and less on God. Verse 12, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. So blessed is the man who um, remains in, or who has endurance, right? So steadfast is just enduring. So blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. And the crown of life, I've looked it up and it says that it's like eternal life, things like that. He will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Oh my word. This is a classic case of cause and effect, right? The cause and effect of temptation, right? Temptation is, is going to lead or, or the temptation to sin leads to death, right? Temptation to sin leads to death. And the truth is that God doesn't tempt us. Even when we think about Job, right? A lot of people sometimes say like, you know, Job was tempted by God. No, he wasn't, right? God gave him the authority, remember? Because all authority comes from God. So God gave the devil the authority to tempt Job. That's what happened there. Even when um, the devil went to Jesus, right? And those in those 40 days and 40 nights, that wasn't God tempting Jesus. The devil tempted Jesus. And the truth is that, like this says, you are not not being tempted by God, right? For God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. God's word is perfect. He is not tempting you. It's the enemy that is tempting you. But, right? But the each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. So a lot of times we are tempted by our own desires, by the things that we want. We're being tempted by those things. And then because of that, we basically allow it to continue to go on and that gives birth to sin, right? So we're tempted by our own desires, and then it turns into sin. And sin, when it is fully formed, when it's fully grown, it brings forth death. This is a cause and effect. And we have to be we have to be on guard against this, right? Next, uh, James says, do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. So basically God doesn't change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we sh should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Verse 19, know this my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Basically the anger of man, this is selfish, right? This is a selfish anger. This is a anger that is based off of our own agenda and not a righteous anger anger, the anger that God has for us. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So basically this is telling us 
be be quiet be still right put away all of our preconceived notions and our selfish anger right our our selfish righteousness and instead be quiet stay in god's word so that we can actually hear what god has to say to us and about us but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like but the one who looks into the perfect law the law of liberty and perseveres being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts he will be blessed in his doing so essentially this is just saying hey we can't just hear god's word this is that whole thing of like don't just have head knowledge right we need to have wisdom right we need to not just hear the word but we need to also do what the word tells us to do right this is our faith in action if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle or control his tongue but deceives his heart the person's religion is worthless religion that is pure and undefiled before god the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world so essentially james is telling us right here girl you gotta walk the walk okay you need to meet needs we can't just hear that things are going on or that somebody needs some help and we don't do anything about it we need to serve others we need to show up and live out our faith and we're going to see so much more of this in chapter two of james chapter one is filled with so much richness and i encourage you to go back through and just read it again for yourself and pull what you can from it but what i really want you to be intentional about when you're reading it today is to think through not just how this can apply to you but what is god showing you through his word in James. I know for me, one thing that really, really stuck out to me is not just having a head knowledge, not just hearing the word or knowing the word, but really living out my faith, right? How am I living out my faith? How am I responding to the needs of those around me? That is one really big thing. And also I really love how like the reminder that James gives us that God is not tempting us. He is not tempting us. We are tempted by our own desires. We give the devil a foothold right? We give him a foothold. We give him a place to root into us and take us captive. And when that happens, then sin is able to become mature in our lives. And we're able to essentially lead to our own death and destruction because we decided to give in to the desires of our flesh. And so James chapter one is a great reminder of the fact that when we endure trials, when we press through and when we turn away from our desires we put ourselves in a better position to just remain righteous with god and god is here god is there he wants to be with us he wants to give us that wisdom and discernment so that we don't fall into temptation and i really believe that james just gives us a really great reminder to be on guard against things like temptation and reminds us to not lean on our own understanding and to focus on god's word and not only hearing it but doing and that's it for chapter one i will see you in chapter two